when you play spades, you deal the cards, goes around one time, you throw out that ace of diamonds, or let's say you throw out the king of diamonds, or it goes around one time, it comes back around, you sitting on the ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, and maybe the seven, but you only got three diamonds. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna count these two books, you know, the ace and the king, yeah. but you throw, out, you throw out the ace, it goes through, you throw out the king, somebody cuts you. You automatically know, okay, this person, this person cut, right? No intrigue in that, right? No, no. Same thing in dominoes. With, when you have traditional domino players, they have the ability to know very quickly as the game, you know, it goes around one or two times. Hey, book, go I, ahead and play that. I, I know what's in your hand. I, I, can, yeah. I can tell you what's in your hand. <laughs> yes. I know what you got. You yeah. probably as well go ahead and play it. Right. So, so, so we wanted to, to create an, some an, uh, inherent entry in, into the game. So what we said is instead of pulling seven, pull five and leave eight stones on the table. Well, now when you leave the eight stones on the table, and remember I said it's, it's a, it's a points driven game. Mm -hmm. So, and remember also I said, we were not domino players. We were not poker players. So we were not married to any rules of any particular game. Right. You know, oh, you can't do that. You know, all that. that all, mm -mm. Right. Anything goes. You create it, and if it makes sense, if we can validate it, it works. So, in Big Stakes Five, you can pull from the quarry. We call it. You know, it's traditionally known as the boneyard, but we call it the quarry. You can pull from the quarry, even if you have a play, because really? look, you might be looking for stuff for a for a point. Right. You know, to, to be able to, you need, you need that 6-4 to get, to get a, a, a 15, you know, right. score right. or what, what happened, you know. Right. But the point is, you as my opponent don't know if I don't have a play or if I'm looking for points. Right. And so, right. or I might have, let's say I'm sitting on four threes. Mm -hmm. Well, chances are two of those other threes are probably in the court. If I pull them, and now I'm at six, there's just one more three out there. Right. I can lock the board, and I can get everybody's money. Yeah. So, but the, the 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 point is entry. That's that's yeah. all it, all it is. And so yeah. when you no, no. and if you yeah, so so that that's what big stakes five is in in a nutshell. Man, I, I love the game. I didn't know what to expect, <laughs> but but I, I love it. Uh, like I said, I only got the beta version, of course. The, the the big rollout comes tomorrow, New Year's New Year's Day, guys. Make sure you download that Big Stakes Five now. How many, I know you got two patents, so can you tell the people the platforms or the patents you have so far? Yeah, we have two patents. One, the first patent we got was for the electronic version, so that that covers your consoles, your mobile apps, uh, and, and computer, uh, you know, web web versions. And uh, we got that in, and we were fortunate to get that in 2013. And then the second patent we got was for the actual tabletop uh, version, which inc includes recreational play, uh, you know, casino play, and then, and then your, your retail um, version. And so, you know, the, the benefit of that, and this, this, is, this is, you know, again, where it goes into follow up with, if you have an idea, you know, Think about when, when we invented Big Stakes Five, Texas Hold'em was at its height, right? ESPN, World Series of Poker, you name it. You know, you always saw uh, Texas Hold'em. Now, think about if you owned Texas Hold'em and every time anywhere in the world somebody played Texas Hold'em poker, whether it was on TV or not, you get paid, right? Yes, licensing, yes. Licensing, exactly. So as proprietors, as patent holders, patent owners, if you will, anytime somebody plays Big Stakes Five, we, you know, 16, 19 uh, will, will benefit from that. And so, you know, it, it's, it, it's something that, that you, you can't take, you know, for granted in, in right. the lease. Uh, but it, it's also, you know, very important. 
uh, any, anytime someone uses chips, you know, and again, using chips to keep score. I have, I have seen, I watched, for example, an episode of Real Husbands of Hollywood, Kevin Hart and, and his crew. Uh, right, right. You know, Dwayne, and that, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, Nelly, all, all, yeah. all the fellas, you know. They're playing dominoes, and guess what? They have cash money right there on the table, right? They're not using chips, but they got the cash money. Well, you replace the cash money with the big six five money chips, and it's the, the equivalent. Right. And, it's, and instead of using the pen and paper to keep score, now you're using actual chips. And when we went down to Andalusia, Alabama, which is the home of the World Domino Championship, we uh, introduced the Big Stakes Five game. Everybody looked at us, you know, kind of that side eye, like, what in the world? But the one thing that got their attention was the chips. Because again, these people have been watching the poker guys on TV for years. And now all of a sudden, as a domino player, traditional, now I get to be like on the guys on TV. So they're playing with the chips and they're yeah. folding them all through the thumb, you know, through the thumb and all these different things that they've seen on TV. Yeah. Now they get to do, you know, themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and, and through that, we've been fortunate now to bring on board uh, Travis Newsom. He's a three-time world domino champion. He's the commissioner of Big Stakes Five and our director of gaming. Wow. And to have someone of that caliber, again, going back to build a team, make it, you know, you, you have to, to have credibility, you know, in what, in what you're doing. Who, it's not, I learned from one of my mentors years ago, it's not what you say it is, it's what everybody else says it is. And to have a three-time world domino champion say, I believe in this enough that I want to be on the team and I want to help lead it, you know, wow. the, the wow. walks. Wow, that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to get that stamp is huge. Now, I know well, I have an iPhone, so I know you have the iOS version from App Store, and then they can also get the game to their phone from Google Play. Google, yeah, Play Google Store. Play. So, so tomorrow, tomorrow it'll be on Google Play Store. Uh, unfortunately, we we the the iOS version won't come out until we go full production. Okay. So that may be maybe in 10 days, 15 days or so. But the Google Play Store, you'll be able to Big Stakes 5, download it and, and, and have have all the fun, you, you know, your heart desires for sure. Wow. Wow. Huge. Now, this is going to have an international presence also, correct? Can, can you go, yes. go into that? Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we're fortunate to... You know, Neil, Neil is actually based in South Africa and he has uh, a great relationship with the CEO of the largest black owned marketing firm on the continent. And, and, and in addition, you know, not just the, 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 the largest black owned and then the, I think the third largest marketing firm period. And they've got clients like Mont Blanc, Texaco, uh, KFC, you know, you name it, the big, the big boys, uh, you know, they even represent the ANC, for example, yeah. and then the president of, of South Africa, for example. Uh, so for them to, to, you know, receive us and say, hey, we want to uh, market, you know, be, become the, mar the agency of record uh, in terms of marketing Big Stakes 5, it, it was an honor for us. We, you know, we say we selected them, but they also, you know, uh, selected selected us right. because they could have easily said, mm, "You guys are you know when you get a little bigger, you know, <laughs> right. to talk to us." Right. But uh, in that, because of the relationships that they have, not only on the continent uh, of Africa, but uh, you know worldwide, they have the ability to reach out and and touch a global audience. And then our development team, the actual programming development team, is based in India. And so they're helping to, to introduce the game in India, uh, for example. And, you know, you're talking 1.4 billion people. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe SD and percentages, you know, that 
typical, oh, if we just get one tenth of one percent of right. all, no, you know, right. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't live by that. But in the sense of uh, having the ability to enter that market uh, with a game that people can can enjoy and understand, and if if the development team, if develop if the development team's reception of the game is anything like what it can be throughout all of India, it's going to be a huge hit there as well. Wow. Because, you know, the, the, the game, it's intuitive, it's strategic, but it's also fun. Yeah, you know? it's very fun. I can yeah. attest to that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I had a conversation uh, with my wife. We, we celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. Two Congratulations. Ago. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And it, we were, she said, uh, how, how do you feel? She asked me, how, how do you feel uh, about, about the game? I said, she's, and, and she, she went on to say, you, you seem a little nervous. I said, I don't know that nervous is, is the word, uh, maybe more anxious than, than, than anything. But she quickly <laughs> put me in my place in terms of letting me know, well, no, 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 no. You've already achieved. Let, let's understand that you have created a platform for people to, to enjoy themselves and have fun. And so that, like an artist, like you, uh, as an author, your job is simply to create the, the, the medium and then how it's received, that's on an individual basis. You can't control it. So why mm -hmm. even, even you know, worry about that? All right. But I said, uh, okay, I get that. I respect that and appreciate that. I said, but a a answer this question for me. Why do you, talking to my wife, play the game the way that you do? Because she lo absolutely loves the game. We're sitting there looking at TV. And she's not paying attention because she's playing Big Stakes 5. Yeah. And I said, why do you, is that because your husband helped create this game? You've been financially invested but why do, why do you play why do you play this game the way you do she said she explained to me you made it where people can be successful right and she explained to me that when people play other games on the market that are huge the reason they're huge is because people are able to succeed and right. when they succeed they have fun right I said, oh. And so to, to a lot of, uh, to the extent that Big Stakes 5 is, is much the same way. You can succeed and, and have fun, you know, playing Big Stakes 5. And, and we purposefully made it where you can play by yourself against the box to your heart's content. One against three, you can play two against two, you know, two live players against two bots. Or you can play four live players and, you know, we've got a roadmap for going forward to even have one-on-one -on -one without the bots and all these different kind of iterations that we have coming forward. But, but it, it, I, I took comfort in that she said, no, I, I have fun. And that, yes. that I think will resonate to your question yes. worldwide. P people will, will in fact have fun playing Big Stakes 5. Yes, yes, and, and and I agree. And the way you were feeling is natural. I felt that way when I wrote the book. I would ask my wife, okay, why why do you like it? And then, yeah. you know, because I felt like she was too close to it, right? right? So so she was biased, I felt. So I wanted some outside opinions. And, and then, you know, I started getting that good feedback. And some people say, I like the book. It's not really what the genre I usually read. But it's nicely written. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm good with that. You know, it's not for everybody. But is the quality there? Is the professionalism there? You know, that's that's what I focus on. And if you like it or not, or you agree with it or not, that's none of my business. But yeah, I want, yeah, yeah. I want you to uh, respect the professionalism and the yes. effort I put into it. Right? Yes. A absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned something inadvertently. Uh, and and I think people really need to understand this, and they may be confused about it. A few times you mentioned relationships, mm. how you met Neil, how, how you met uh, your, your you know your, the the 
social media uh, mm -hmm. director, just different people yeah. you've met, even the relationship with your wife, for her to retort or respond back to you in a re reaffirming positive way, how important is it as an entrepreneur to get those good, positive, fruitful relationships? And how do you form them? Yeah, uh, that that's a that's a phenomenal question. First of all, uh, and one that I think is inherent to who you are as a person, because if you, I I think you know I, I'm not an expert in the field necessarily, but I think if if you're not a genuine soul, then you. I don't know if rebuff is, is the word or, or, or you, you shun or you, you, you create yeah. a, a field around yourself yeah. that doesn't allow others to, to enter. Yeah. And so uh, I, I feel like I, I, I've been fortunate through years, quite frankly, of having relationships as the with individuals that whether I have talked to them in years or not, that when they hear my voice or, or hear my name, see my name, that they respond, you know, and, and in, a, in, a, in a positive way. Yeah. And I'll give you, give you an example. Uh, one of my dearest friends, um, he was a second lieutenant with me in, in the Air Force. And we were stationed in Korea together. And, and his name is uh, Roger Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. Now, Charlie, as we, as we call him, Charlie went to NC State undergrad, but then he went to A&T, North Carolina A&T, as a, as a grad, because he wanted to become a pilot. He, he got his undergrad in engineering, but he wanted to be a pilot. And so he went to North Carolina A&T, North Carolina A&T. And we met in training, and then we ended up one month apart in, in uh, Korea together. Now, Charlie is what would be considered a good old boy. Okay. And, and man, when you talk about salt of the earth kind of guys, and I, 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 I laugh at him because he, he's the only person that I have ever met that still to this day uses the word suffer. And he would he would call me Mikey, you know. And he'd say, "What's going on there, Mikey? And what's you know?" Because we we lived in the same captain's in, in, the, in the lieutenant's dorm right. in in Korea. And he's like, "Well, you know." And he was I think he was on the third or fourth floor. I was down on the first floor. He's like, "You know, what 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 are we having for supper?" Right. <laughs> so, but uh, man, I hadn't talked to Charlie in probably twenty two years. And I'd been looking for his number. And another guy that we were stationed with over there, uh, Freddy Krueger, shout out to Freddy, uh, Mike Freddy Krueger. He had Charlie's number, gave it to me. I reached out to Charlie. Man, we talked about two hours. Like it, like it had, you know, we never, never stopped, you know, talking. But I say all of that to say, I think it goes back to who you are, you know, as a person. And that, that, and you know you, you you've probably seen it where it's not what you do for people or what you say to people but how you made them feel you know and and i think maybe to to some extent i guess perhaps they people have had great great feelings you know when interacting with me right. so that is what has allowed me to to be able to call on on, on different people and you know, and I've, I've, I've been fortunate, uh, SD, through, through my life. I've met celebrities. You know, I was meeting celebrities. I mean, in Utah, celebrities like Howard Cosell and Jim Lampley and Sugar Ray Leonard and, you know, all the you know, huge people of, you know, uh, Harry Belafonte. You know, they, they come over to the house. You know, they weren't coming to see me, obviously. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> I, I tease people. I, I knew Doug Williams. I met Doug when I was six years old yeah. and he was a third string quarterback at Grambling as a freshman. 
And, you know, I'm at practice and he's throwing me the ball because he's not on the field. So he just, you know, tossing. Right. And, but point being, I've, I've been around, you know, different people. But, but what I learned, again, all of these lessons go back to, to my grandfather. But, you know, he, he taught me you have to be able to, to dine with kings yet walk among, you know, the common man. And so there is no single person that I put in any pecking order uh, with respect to status or, or otherwise. And right. so I think that that genuineness then inures a relationship with people that they respond, you know, when I need them. And so, I, you know, I can call them, for example, Kevin Frazier at Entertainment Tonight or Michael Blackson, you know, African mm -hmm. King of Comedy, and, you know, my wife, she's like, you know, dad, you know, we, we just sit there looking at TV. There's daddy's friend, you know, like, <laughs> you know, but, but it's not something, you know, you harp on, you raise right. your hand, like, oh, you know, I'm this, that, no, 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 no. you know, right, right. so, yeah. uh, but that, you know, I think that's, that's what makes that possible. And that goes who, back, who you that are. goes back to the ego. Yeah. It goes yeah, back to the ego. That goes yeah, back to the yeah. ego. Yeah. It just gotta be, gotta know who you are, uh, be secure, be self-aware. And uh, these things are just falling to your lap. Uh, but but you got to be working in the process, too. You can, can't be in a cave yeah. hiding, you know, nobody right, knows you exist, right? right? So, exactly. yeah, yeah, kind of expounding on that. That is the way you and I met. Yes. And so, yes. and I, I would have never thought that we would be where we, where we are going or where we are at today from where we started. Right, so, right, so right. just to uh, update the people real quick, I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick story. So I'm writing a book, A Toast to the Man, every week, every Wednesday, I'm posting excerpts of the book. There you <laughs> go. Ah, uh, my man, my man. <laughs> I'm posting excerpts of the book uh, on Facebook. Uh, Mike is a childhood classmate of my wife. So they're Facebook friends. He sees the excerpts. He said, hey, it's my classmate's husband. Now, me and Mike don't know each other. He's just supporting just because that's his classmate's husband, a Gremlin State alumni. Hey, there you go. So he right, gets the right. book. He purchases the book. Um, he says he enjoys the book. Man, got, got a lot from it. Uh, one particular section, a chapter of the book really, really hit home for him. And um, fast forward, he comes to my book release party. Um, he has a good time. We start building from that, kind of staying in touch, communicating. Um, fast forward. He, uh, I won't go into detail with it, but he uh, encounters a business opportunity uh, related to film, and that, and and he gets he gets that opportunity through a relationship he has, right? Mm -hmm. Relationship again. Yes. Yep. So really? he contacts me and says, hey, would you be interested in writing a script for this docuseries? Now, keep in mind, man, I had never written a docuseries, but it <laughs> always it had always been something on my, my, my wish list to do, to write not necessarily a docuseries, but a movie script. So you got relationships. I meet my wife. She knows Watkins, Mike Watkins. Man, Watkins hit it off, right? Watkins has a relationship with his business partner. Watkins comes back to me and asks if I want to be a writer, right? It's all relationships and how you make people feel. And if you're obedient and open to being obedient, right? Fast right, forward, right. a relationship I had since junior high, former yeah, NBA right. player, <laughs> I won't, I won't say his name because I don't know if he wants all that out there right now, what we got going yeah, yeah. on. So he reaches back to me, comes back, moves back to town, reaches back to me because how our relationship was in junior high and high school, even as a grown man, he remembers that, comes back, reaches out to me about one thing, <laughs> about this one thing he has going on. So I say... Hey man, I need to put you in the room with Mike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they talk about that. We go golfing. They talk about that. Exchange <laughs> numbers. I talked to my friend 
later, he said, like, yeah, yeah, Mike's going to be a part of that. But he's also going to be a part of this other thing I got going on, too. I said, like, wow, OK. <laughs> I said, like, OK. So man, these are all relationships, people, and how you make people feel. So fast forward a bit. We have our group meeting, which includes Mike, my friend, and a few others about the business venture we're all going to be a part of. Mike says, hey, man, now we're going back to the guy who we're connected to on the film industry. Yeah, Mike yeah. says, hey, Rod would be a good piece to this. Let's bring Rod in. They don't know Rod. I say, I'm good with it. I want to win. So they speak to Rod. Everybody respects him. Like, wow, okay. Yeah, we, he, he has to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah. He comes, he's, a, he's a part of this new business venture. People, relationships, 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 but doing the work. If I don't write the book, I don't meet Mike, right? If, right. if Rod doesn't do what he's doing on the uh, film side and he doesn't uh, respect Mike enough to what he brings to the table because they're, they're watching each other work or not work, right? Right, right? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Right, so all this is coming together because we're working for one. People have to respect and know what you do, all right? Then ego, <clears throat> remove ego, be willing to work with others, know yourself, all right? And then being obedient. And, and uh, hey man, we, and this has all happened within a year. Do you realize yes. that? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, I do. I, do. I mean, so that's why I say I 20, 2020 has been good for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the and, groundwork and, was laid a year, a year or two before, like, this groundwork has been laid, you know? So. Right, right, right. And, yeah. and, and that, that takes what, what, what you just described. It takes special personalities to, one, be obedient to the source uh, in the universe. But also, you know, again, ego, because ego could be like, well, he doing enough. So why I need to invite him? I'm going to let him. I know he's working on this, so I'm going to let him keep doing what he's doing. And then you don't, you know, uh, allow that, that intermingling and whatnot. Whereas when you remove the veil and you go in truth and in love, then it's no, 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 no. I have to do what's best for the the entire collective yes. you know even to the extent what you didn't say you know because i and i respect that because you're so humble but you were like i don't have to be a part of you know one of those ventures right. but no we're like no 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 no. <laughs> you know yeah. you you made that happen so of course you're gonna you know you're gonna be a part of it yeah. but but ego you could have been you know your, your mindset could have been completely different like well no 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 i didn't mean for y'all to be connected on two things I just meant that one, I just meant that one thing. No, know, man, I was I was I was ecstatic and I was like, wow, I felt um I felt humble, grateful that you know I was a vessel to make one of the vessels to make that happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I, I did I did you know put out there that I could pull out of one of these ventures because uh, quite honestly, people, I don't bring a lot to that table concerning that venture. Mike brings a lot. Uh, my, my friend brings a lot, and I'm I'm only not saying his name because, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, Absolutely. right. Uh, Rod brings a lot, uh, and other people bring a lot. Man, I'm I'm low on the totem pole, but I know that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I and, and and that's in that venture, not meaning as a whole as a person, but I have to be self aware of where I fit in and what I bring in that venture, and right, so. Right. And so most of most of the time on the Zoom meetings, man, I may throw out a question or two, but hey, man, I'm a student in that in that realm. I'm a student and I'm listening. And if I do ask a question, it's gonna be a quality question, not just out of based out of ego to be a part of it. You know, just to right, say right. I said something. And, well, right. And, and, right, but but to that to that end, but oftentimes people will in fact limit themselves uh, to to the extent that. Or or others 